Stanley Kubrick's new film, The Shining, based on Stephen King's novel, opens today. After a year of buildup, it is a letdown. When is it okay to say a movie is bad? Action! Most of us would say always. Movies are art. Art is subjective. There are plenty of movies that I like very much that some people don't. And vice versa, movies that people go nuts for that I just don't get. Why, 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 why? There definitely seems to be a difference between what those who regularly watch movies and what I'll call the average movie goer will watch. <laughs> That's why it doesn't surprise me all that much when an original movie like The Nice Guys, even with glowing reviews and bankable movie stars, comes in fourth, losing out to films that target the lowest common denominator. So a movie based on an app that was popular three years ago, a lowbrow comedy sequel, and a franchise cow went out. There are fundamental elements that separate well-beloved films from much despised ones. Anyone who calls Casablanca a bad film would be hard-pressed to find acceptance in prestigious film-loving circles. But why is something like Casablanca talked about so lovingly, ranking on so many top 10 lists, when a modern classic like There Will Be Blood not so much? Well, an obvious answer is that Casablanca is much older, and has had much more time to inspire filmmakers and film as an art form. They're also two completely different films, and there's no real reason to compare them at all. But what I'm trying to say is that time ultimately has the last word. Citizen Kane had more impact on how movies were made than possibly any other film, but does that make it a better film than, say, Robocop? It is my great pleasure to present to you Robocop. Is Robocop a perfect movie? We talk about like like movies, like classic movies, like Citizen Kane. Like it feels weird to, to like talk about Robocop as some sort of masterpiece. It's it's perfect in the sense that everything it sets out to do, yeah. Yeah. it accomplishes flawlessly. It's also important to meet a movie halfway, to come to the movie's own terms. You don't watch an Ed Wood film with the same expectation that you would watch a David Fincher film. It's also certainly possible to like a film while still acknowledging it is heavily flawed and is probably out and out bad. That's not how the force works. No, seriously, this can be done. Independence Day is a movie that I know is fundamentally bad. Its characters are thinly drawn stereotypes, it's blindingly, unapologetically patriotic with no sense of self-awareness whatsoever. It's a movie I would call innocently dumb. Whereas two years later, the same director made another action movie that just assaults you with how dumb it is. It's not innocent in its attempts to entertain, it just comes off unpleasant. I'm sorry, this video is going off on a tangent. But anyway, where was I? Casablanca! Play it once, Sam. For all time's sake. I don't know what you mean, Miss Elsa. Play it, Sam. I have a friend who doesn't care for Casablanca. In fact, the majority of audiences probably don't care much for Casablanca. It's a movie that is beloved by those who love movies, those who appreciate the art of screenwriting, and would feel too foreign to the crowd who sees a movie once its opening weekend and never feels a desire to revisit it, let alone would watch a black and white film that is mostly characters talking to one another. But where one person would probably fall asleep, another sees a masterpiece. Often cited as his favorite film, Roger Ebert said of Casablanca, Seeing the film over and over again, year after year, I find it never grows over familiar. It plays like a favorite musical album. The more I know it, the more I like it. The black and white cinematography has not aged as color would. The dialogue is so spare and cynical it has not grown old-fashioned. But also art is subjective, so if you don't like it, that's okay. The thing I love about film critics is that they don't have the last word. Ebert and I may agree that Casablanca is a great movie, but the most popular film critic of all time was much more dismissive about a few films that I really like. Our next movie is named Friday the 13th Part 5. This movie is just more leftover recycled garbage from the last four times around. Eh, to be fair, Part 5 isn't one of the better ones in the series. Even Pauline Kael, one of the most inspirational film critics of all time, outright hated some films that most would consider masterpieces. But I suppose that's what makes a critic's voice interesting. In a world where most opinions are simply shuffled into a majority rules mentality, it's the unique opinion that captures our attention. 
Whether you agree or disagree, I personally think the job of a critic is not to just tell you if a movie is worth watching or not watching, but to reveal an idea or thought about a film that hadn't occurred before, to allow you to look at something in a different way, to peel back the layers of a work of art so as to appreciate it even more, to make it come alive. Maybe some people feel that critics only spoil the fun of liking a movie, but of all the critics I listen to or read and know, I've never known one who hated a movie just for the twisted pleasure of it. When all is said and done, what sets a film's worth is whatever value you, the viewer, place on it. So there's a paradox. Film is an art form, and what is good and bad is completely subjective. A movie may be technically bad, but there can still be something about it worth liking. And a film may be technically good, but without a connection, the movie won't mean much to you. Louis, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Except when you're wrong, because Casablanca is a masterpiece. <laughs>